today I want to show you how to make this pouch necklace. I have made it using square stitch um, and it's a it's a long project. I'm not going to lie, but I find it's like meditative and really relaxing, especially when you get to the side where there's no pattern. And you're just weaving those beads one by one. I love having necklaces like this for myself and as gifts for people because you could just hold something special close to your heart whether it be a crystal or a mantra or a poem or maybe a letter from a loved one, um, a, a shell from a special place, a rock from a special place. It's just like, um, I don't know, it's like a way of holding a little bit of magic next to you and help to keep you grounded. Um, so I, ha I do have a pattern to go along with this. You don't have to follow my pattern. You can make up your own pattern as you go because of the way square stitch is laid out. You could actually make a pattern on graph paper because it just any sort of graph paper, grab yourself some, design your thing and follow along or you could just make it solid colored. Or if you want my pattern, you can find it in the link below. Okay, so let's get started with this project. Okay, so let's take a look at the supplies. As usual, I am using size 11 Miyuki Delica beads. They're just my favorite. Someday I'll switch. I don't know when that will be. <laughs> I am also using a size 15 Miyuki seed bead. Now this is a round bead and it is smaller and I'm using that bead to sew up the edges of the pouch here. Okay, I also have this chain I'm using. You could use any sort of chain. Um, this specific one I've had people ask me about, it's called a drawn cable chain and they're 5.5 millimeter links. I have a size 12 beading needle. And as usual, I have my six pound fireline beading thread. Okay, I think that's it, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is add a stopper bead. It's very important when you're beginning square stitch to have a stopper bead at the end um, to keep your beads from falling off. So I pick up a bead, I loop around, and I come back through the other side of that bead. And that's just going to keep my beads from falling off. This will pull off later. And then I'm going to add the first row of beads. Now this pouch I'm making is 31 beads wide. So if you're just gonna follow along and just do a solid color or whatever, um, that's what we're doing. So it's 31 beads wide. I've added all my beads following the pattern. I wanna sort of wrap that around my finger. And then the last bead is facing me. I'm gonna pick up a new bead and I'm going to take my needle and come through the last bead towards myself. So starting away from myself, coming towards myself, the needle is. I sound like Yoda there, <laughs> sorry. Coming towards myself, the needle is. Uh, so now I'm going to take my needle <clears throat> and go back through the bead I've just added. There we go. And we're gonna repeat this process. So pick up the next bead and come right through you, know, you want to really hang on to this, come right through the next bead in the row. Sorry, you can't see it for a second, but now you will. So we're coming through that bead back towards ourselves. And then when we pull it tight, we're going to go back through the new bead in the opposite direction, like so. Now with this first row, it's so important that you are holding those beads between your fingers when you pull tight. Otherwise you won't have enough tension, things will get loose. This foundation row for this pouch is so important. So again, pick up a bead, we're bringing the needle through the next bead towards ourselves and then in the opposite direction through the new bead we've just added. Okay, and you see every time I pull that tight, you can't actually see it because I have to hold it between my fingers to make sure that that stays nice and tight. So again, we're just watching this technique a little bit more and then I'm coming back through that bead and just hold it tight and really give it a tug. And you want these to be lined up just like that beautifully, like little rows of corn. Um, you don't want gaps in between there because if you do, your whole pouch will be sort of like loosey-goosey. Foundation rows and beading are like crucial. So 
pay attention to your foundation row. If you finish your foundation row and it looks wonky, I say start again because you don't want to have to get like 30 lines into this and be like, oh, I should have restarted. If it doesn't look right, looks too loose, try it again. The other thing I have to say about this is I would not recommend this project for your first square stitch project because it's big. It's a big project and um, you're going to get frustrated. So (laughs) I would recommend starting with one of my other videos. There's like a heart earring uh, square stitch video with a free pattern. That's a great one to start with. This one, don't start with it. Okay. But once you get some square stitch under your belt, like this is easy. Square stitch is actually a simple stitch um, because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. It's just um, the tension is the only thing we're really concerned about here. So here I am at the end of this first row. I'm going to finish it up here. And then we're going to take a look at that row. So now we have this nice little snaky thing. You don't want it curved like that. So gently straighten it out. Make sure the tension is where you want it to be. There aren't too large of gaps in between your beads. This is looking good to me. And so now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to work my square stitch in the opposite direction. And on the pattern, you will see um, there are arrows of where you should be starting with the beads. And I also have word patterns. So you could just say, okay, four, I need four green, two white, whatever the case may be. So we're just going to work in this opposite direction, doing the exact same thing. Okay, so this is boring. You don't really need to see this, Um, but, you know, just take your time. Take your time. These first four rows are are hard because you don't have a lot to hold on to. But once you sort of build up some of your like, it's almost like fabric. I feel like when you're weaving this, you'll start to see at a point, it becomes really nice to hold like a piece of fabric. Um, But once you have a larger piece to work with, it does get easier and it does become relaxing. I swear it will be relaxing. It may seem stressful in the beginning. Um, I took ages to make this. I made this over the course of, I think, three or four evenings. Um, It was just a nice way to sort of unwind at the end of the day for me. And um, you'll see throughout the course of the video, my lighting changes, my nails change, everything changes because it was a big project. Um, So follow along. And in a second, I am going to show you um, how to weave in a thread because uh, another thing is that square stitch takes a lot of thread. So you will be changing your thread often. Be aware of that. Make sure you have plenty of thread to start with. Um, And don't worry that you're using so much thread. And don't worry about changing thread. I know it could be kind of scary to change the thread, but it's better to change the thread and have the extra thread than to you know, have a like 20 foot long thread and worry about getting tangled. Like I, I usually use about five feet for each time I cut a thread. Um, so that's where you want to be. You don't want it to make it longer just to avoid having to start a new thread. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more here. And in a second, here we go. We are going to look at ending a thread. So here I am. I like to end my thread sort of mid row in square stitch um, because it makes it easier to sort of just start Um, with a like I don't know with like less interruption of flow so I'm going to take my thread end and I'm going to weave it back into the square stitch just sort of going back and forth back and forth make sure your thread is hiding in between and then I'm going to loop it around these two little sets of two beads to create some tension and um just do that until I am ready to clip it. And that should be perfectly good. I'm going to clip that and then I will cut a new thread and uh, th- thread my needle and find a place to start. Here we go. I have that new thread ready to go. I'm going to start a little bit further down and I'm going to leave about a three inch tail there. And then just do the same thing, but in reverse. So I'm just going to weave around a couple of beads to create some tension here. And after we've done that, we will weave back up to where we ended. 
So I'm just gonna go around a little bit there, make sure this is nice and secure before I start weaving with it again. And now I'm working my way up towards where I finished before. So see, I'm gonna go over one row and just slide right up that last row where I ended. I'll be there in a second. Okay, and now I'm exiting right where I would have exited had I not run out of thread. And I'm gonna pick up my next bead and just carry on as I was. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna keep weaving now. Um, I'm gonna fast forward through this process because as I said, it took days, but I took some progress shots along the way um, so you could see what was happening. Um, I like to sort of, I don't know, meditate, maybe think of a mantra while you're doing this. I like to think of sort of weaving magic into the pouch as you're making it. The nice part is when you get to the back of this pattern in particular, it's just one color. So you're not really thinking about anything. You're not counting anymore. You're a pro, you're an absolute pro at square stitch by this point. <laughs> and so you could just really like relax. You could do this one like while you're sitting and watching TV. If you wanted to have a like little um, tray on your lap, I don't actually recommend it. It's probably not great for your eyes to watch TV on that. But, um, you know, I, I listen to podcasts. I listen to music. Um, I listen to books, audio books. And sometimes I just listen to my own thoughts, which, you know, it can be scary, but also interesting. Um, so take your time. The first part of the, the front of it is 31 rows. The back is 32 rows. So you have 63 rows to really sit with yourself. And here we are. I am ready to sew this up. I have my original um, tail where we first started. And I'm going to just take that and I need to weave it into the work. You want to get rid of that before you start sewing up the sides of your pouch. So I'm just going to weave that in the same way we ended threads before. So secure that thread. And then I will go to my other thread and put my needle back on there. In this example, my thread, my working thread is really long. So I'm going to be able to use my working thread to sew up the sides and finish up this pouch. But if you don't have a long working thread, then you should weave that in and start a long working thread. because so you need to go all the way down one side of the pouch, all the way up the other side of the pouch, okay? So make sure you have plenty of working thread which I have right now. And now I'm gonna pick up one of those size 15 seed beads, the smaller ones. And from my working thread, I am going to go across to the thread bridge, directly across from where, where my thread was exiting, like so. And then I'm gonna pick up my next bead and then come across to the opposite side thread bridge. So we're doing a little zigzag. So I'm going under that thread bridge, pull it tight. And then I'm gonna do that again. And I think you're probably starting to get the picture. Pick up another bead, go under the thread bridge on the opposite side, like so. And we're gonna do it again. And these shouldn't line up in a straight line. They should sort of form a bit of a zigzag as you'll start to see here. I really like the way they, um, I don't know, I like the way they line up here. I find it satisfying. <laughs> so pick up another bead, go across. Just make sure you're not missing any of those little thread bridges um, because then they won't line up right. Uh, so this is what they should look like. So we're going back and forth, across. And we're just gonna keep doing that all the way to the bottom of this little pouch. And you're gonna have a nice little line of these little gold seed beads. I also like working with these little seed beads. Here you're gonna find it's very important that you are using a size 12 beading needle or smaller because um, with these size 15 seed beads, they are, they're small, their holes are smaller. So you need the right needle. It's important you're using the right needles, the right threads, the right beads. These things make your life difficult if you don't have them. Um, the way they should be. Okay, so now we are gonna do a little fast forward. Here we go. This is what it should look like. It's so satisfying. I don't know, it looks like a little corn or something. Um, so I'm just gonna finish up. 
this last little bit and then I will move over to the other side. So just finishing this up. Not sure why I left so much of this footage in. I think because I just like looking at those little beads lined up. Um, so I'm going back and forth across. As you see, it's really important. You don't want to skip those uh, thread bridges. And when we get to the bottom, there is an extra little spot there that we have to hit because there's each, the front of it is 31, the back is 31, and then we have an extra little line at the bottom that forms the bottom of the pouch. So you see that little thread bridge there is where that extra one is. Okay, and now we are done. Now, because I have thought ahead and my thread is long enough, it's, this is why it's important to have a long enough thread for this section, I can run my thread all the way across that bottom little, um, little row there, the bottom row of the pouch. And so I'm going to do that. And then when I get across, I am just going to weave right up that other side like I did um, with the previous side. So line it up. It's important that you really take your time to line it up. You don't want to get to the end of this row and realize that, um, you know, that the, the edges aren't lined up at the top of your pouch. Okay, so take your time, line it up, make sure everything looks beautiful. Um, the nice thing about square stitch is it is like, these lines, these vertical and horizontal lines that line up perfectly. Like I said at the beginning, um, that's why you could easily use graph paper because you do have these straight horizontal and vertical lines. Um, so it's a really easy stitch to design your own patterns because you could get graph paper anywhere. Um, so I hope you will try doing some stuff with square stitch on graph paper and make your own designs. Um, maybe make a special pouch for someone in your life. Here we go. I once had a friend who bought a pouch for me and she put a letter from her child in the pouch and then sent the pouch to her mother who was living in another country. And I thought that was really sweet um, because she could carry those words next to her heart. So now I have ended that row and I'm going to take my chain, put my needle through it, pull the chain down to the beadwork like so. And then I'm going to weave my thread back into the work. So I'm going to come up through, I'm going to go through like three beads here. And then I'm going to go back in the opposite direction. And I'm going to go through that chain again. So bringing my needle back through the chain link. And then back through the beads. And then I want to do that one more time because we want this to be super secure. So back through the beads, back through the chain link again. Um, if you, this is where it's important that you're using the right thread because um, Fireline has a really strong thread and your thread is what's holding this chain on. So make sure you're using a super strong thread. Um, I really hope you're using Fireline, honestly. So, so now, because I have enough uh, thread here and I made sure I had enough at the start of this, I am going back across my work and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side with the other side of the chain. Now, I haven't given you a length of the chain. Um, it's obviously an over, this is an over the head necklace. Mine hits right about at my breastbone. Um, you could also do a shorter necklace and add a clasp, um, but you know, it's this part of it is really up to you. And so I'm just showing you how I went across <laughs> and I'm making sure I am sewing it to the front um, where I sewed the other one to the front section. Um, or you can put them both in the back, but just make sure you're sewing both sides of the chain to the same side of your pouch. So I'm doing that same exact technique, weaving through. I want to go through three times. Um, the difference this time is that we're almost done. And so we're going to just weave the thread into the work there. Um, do a couple like loops around some beads like we've done before. Make sure there's plenty of tension 
go further than you need to because this is the very end, right? So we don't want this coming loose. And once you're done with that, you could clip your thread and then admire your gorgeous work. Look what you've done. I'm telling you, if you do this one, when you get to the end, you're going to be so proud of this piece. And it just feels so nice to touch like such a large amount of beadwork. Stick your fingers in that little pouch. It's really nice. I hope you will try it. I hope you will make something magical for yourself or someone. And um, I hope you have a great day. Happy beading. Happy almost spring. And uh, don't forget to spread love. Okay. Bye guys. Please subscribe. Okay. Bye.